everyone. So my name is Ashley Mackay. I'm a user experience researcher and writer. I'm also autistic. I was born with a different brain and I didn't find out until I was nearly 30. Learning about my neurodiversity five years into my career had a big impact, for better and for worse. For me, marginalisation has always existed on both sides of the diagnosis fence, but in different ways. Today, as I celebrate my 31st birthday with all of you, <laughs> yay, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> I'd like to share some stories um, and explore the difference of that diagnosis with you. Pre-diagnosis, life was harder than it needed to be. I've always known there was something different about me. Interacting with other people has always been really hard. Statues are much easier to talk to. <laughs> that, that is me. I'm about three there. <laughs> I've been bullied a lot. I've been called harsh, rude, inappropriate, a bad person. A monster and for a really long time I believed that that's what I was. I was six years old the first time I saw a therapist. I was 12 the first time I started showing signs of depression and I was 15 the first time I tried to take my own life. Since we're here to talk about my career, we'll start with university. And I want to be clear that when I say career, I'm not just talking about a job. I'm talking about every job I've ever had, every volunteer position, every article, every talk, everything. I didn't have any real friends at uni. My peers would sit around and discuss the evidence they had to prove how much of a bad person I was. They did this right in front of me like I wasn't even there. They wouldn't sit with me at lunch or in class. They said it was because I was not normal and I was too weird. When I was nominated for an award, they told me I didn't deserve it. They had no problems telling me that I had taken it from someone else. And they also said that the only reason why I was nominated in the first place was because someone believed in gender equality. Lovely. <laughs> the teachers weren't that much better, to be honest. Um, I once appealed a grade that I felt was unfair, and I was rewarded with an audio recording of an eight minute rant about how stupid I was to think that I was worth more. When I started working, I thought things would be different, but I struggled to connect with my colleagues. In my first few years of working, I learned how it feels to be turned away from a team meeting. I learned the sting of snarky comments designed to make me feel small. And I've been on the receiving end of exclusionary bullying. I developed a reputation for being difficult to work with quite early on in my career. And that broke my heart. My work is everything to me. I love it. I once got sent to EQ training. <laughs> And the only thing that was, was confusing. <laughs> I failed every exercise and wasted about eight hours of my time. Um, I once got myself banned from conducting user research, which was my job description at the time. I, someone uh, decided that I couldn't be trusted speaking to members of the general public, so they made me train someone else to do it for me. Another time I worked on a big high profile project where the only feedback I got at the end was this. Ashley worked on her social skills. That made me feel sick. In April last year, I kind of reached a point where I needed, I needed answers. I, I was at peace with my differences. I needed to know why they were there. Enough was enough. I was assessed and diagnosed as autistic. When I first got diagnosed, I went through a roller coaster of emotions. I was sad at being diagnosed late. I was angry at being diagnosed late. 
And I was relieved at simply being diagnosed. The initial reactions I got from other people covered a spectrum broader than the spectrum itself. I was congratulated, pitied, belittled, and offered support. There were people who told me to be careful about who you told. Don't put it on social media. Mm -mm. And never ever tell a prospective employer until after they've hired you. I learned early on that disability stigma stinks like shame, and it doesn't come out in the wash. I've also learned that people will often perceive a hierarchy of disability types, as in they will view some disabilities as more worthy of acceptance than others. I've interacted with people who think it's perfectly okay to tell me to work on or fix my autistic traits, but don't seem to understand that it's not even remotely okay. When you have an invisible disability, it's taken like you're lacking a skill. There's always a lingering expectation that you will change. I wouldn't have a permanent lifelong neurological disability if I could. <laughs> and <laughs> when I, you know, when I own that and I go, okay, well, you know what, I'm actually okay with that, um, I come under fire for promoting mediocrity or for undermining those who have learned to evolve. Pre-diagnosis, I never thought I'd be in a situation where everything regarding my own brain would be taken as less than truthful. I didn't know that getting diagnosed was only the first step and that it would be my job to educate everyone from the next door neighbor's friend to airline carriers, but also to have to do that in the face of constant disbelief. I also never thought I'd encounter people who think it's okay to tell me what my needs are as an autistic person, or worse, have conversations about those needs without me even being there. Nobody speaks for me. My advocacy work has largely been met with support, but there's a dark side too. I've been told that I've got nothing to add because I'm less accomplished than other autistic adults. Sorry, I haven't written a book yet. <laughs> I've received hate mail in my personal inbox and my actual mailbox, as in the one in the front yard. I've been told that I'm pointless and over-emotional. I've been told that I'm a horrible person and that I shouldn't have kids in case they turn out just like me. Pre-diagnosis, I was a rude, inappropriate monster that no one wanted to invite to dinner. Post-diagnosis, I became an inconvenient, lying, less evolved blocker to change who shouldn't have kids. The post-diagnosis experiences have really surprised me. The most mind-blowing thing of all is pre or post-diagnosis, I'm still me. I didn't get a new brain in April last year, I got context about how my brain works. I also found the final piece of my identity. That's mine. It's all mine. Context is a powerful thing. You know, I discovered that my view of myself was not only wrong, but also incomplete. I didn't have, I didn't have the whole picture or the right frame of reference. And that context is also mine. It's not a tool for other people to frame their disdain of me. It hasn't been easy, but at the end of the day, none of that takes away from the fact that getting assessed and diagnosed was the best thing that ever happened to me. The bad stuff has been offset by some incredibly positive experiences. I recently learned how to trust people again. And my relationship with my parents has never been better. Everything I've been through has made me tougher. I actively participate in four diversity committees and I lead two of them. One of those roles is at the national level. I speak, I write, and I'm never going to stop challenging this neurotypical world. I've learned that when people do and say these awful things, sometimes it's because they feel threatened. They feel threatened because they can't always connect with the idea of autistic people owning their differences. 
it challenges their thinking in ways they might not be open to. My self-acceptance is not a threat. It's not about anyone except me, because it's mine. It sits, my autism sits at the very core of my identity. It's not an affliction, and it's certainly not something I lug around with me in my purse. When I discovered identity first language, I felt liberated. <laughs> I do use the terms Asperger's, Aspie, and autistic interchangeably, but that's my choice and I own it. I'm a proud autistic person, not a person with autism. And while the bullying and the ignorance is incredibly hurtful and frankly frustrating, these people aren't necessarily bad. What they are is human. And what do we do every single day? We design products, services, experiences, and much, much more for these humans. By using the skills we have sitting right here in this room, we can help ensure that no one else has to experience what we've been through. As people who are working in tech and gaming, we're already crafting the future. We're holding it in our hands. Everything is designed. There's no reason why we can't use our human designing powers for good and make that future an inclusive one. We have the power to design a future that's safe and okay for people who are different to be themselves. It's not rocket science. But we've got a long way to go. And to that, to that I say, challenge accepted. Thank you. Hi, um, thank you for that, um, it, was, it was really good. I'm curious, a lot of the, um, especially the pre-diagnosis experiences that uh, you had, um, seemed to me like uh, there would be things that you probably wouldn't have experienced as much if you were male. Um, I'm curious on your perspective of that, I guess, and, and maybe what we can do about those kinds of, of cultural expectations um, on the way people interact with the world and the people around them. Do you mean, when you say male, do you mean a, a male autistic person or? Yeah, yeah, that's what you mean, yeah. And, and I have to say I agree with you because um, it was funny, like it's one of the reasons why I was diagnosed late it was because when I was in that right age group in the mid 90s, they were looking for boys. It was like, no, girls don't have Asperger's. Are you serious? Like, really? No. Um, <laughs> And there are a lot of women now in their 30s who are being diagnosed as on the spectrum. And, and it's so funny because it presents so differently and in, in each individual. But also, it also, I also wonder how much of what we as, as women are raised to be, we're raised to fit in, we're told, be, be good, don't rock the boat, don't, don't be annoying, you know, be a good girl. And it's like, I wonder how much of that actually comes into how it shapes how it presents. So yeah, I agree. If I'd been male, possibly, I could have had a very different experience. You mentioned people warned you not to reveal your diagnosis until after you'd been hired, but it sounds like that is not the route that you take now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no. Um, so I've always been one person. So I, I used to work with someone who was like, oh no, I'm a different person at work. To, to the one I am at home, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I've always just been this one authentic self, and I was kind of like, no, I have to take my whole self everywhere with me. It, it wouldn't be, it would be a disservice to myself if I left part of it at home <laughs> or off a job application. <laughs> Hello. Um, I, uh, among all of the things that I kind of do, I work in a university teaching students and we have quite a large number of students who are attracted to tech fields and game fields um, who are um, autistic and self-identify very loudly as autistic in class and are quite proud of that part of their identities, which is awesome for them. Um, but I was wondering, like, I know you don't obviously speak on behalf of everybody with autism, it presents very differently in everyone, but is there anything that you could um, think of that people could be doing in those sorts of spaces to support those people? Because um, obviously, yeah, different teaching methods work in different ways and I just want to make sure that they don't feel like they need to hide that part of themselves if they are proud of it now going into the workforce. 
Uh, I think it's really just important to rem remember that it is very much an individual thing and if in doubt, just ask. You know, if there's anything you can do, just, just talk to them and say, hey, you know, I think it's really awesome, but is there anything I can do to help you be you? <laughs> I think I just enable them to be themselves. Yeah. We have another massive round of applause for Ashley.